Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. I wanted to review this chest CT with you. I'm going to let you look through it like this at first, get an overall view of what you think might be going on. Look at the anatomy. Okay, I'll tell you now this patient has shortness of breath and they ordered a CT pulmonary embolism. Do you see pulmonary embolism? And as we're going up through here, it's important to distinguish pulmonary arteries from pulmonary veins. And that takes some practice, but if you go down this way, you'll start realizing, okay, here's the main pulmonary artery, right and left pulmonary arteries. And so the first vessels you see in the upper lobes converging on the mediastinum like that. So you see what I mean? Going up here, here are the upper lobe vessels. Now as we go down, the first vessels you see coming into, converging in the mediastinum, are pulmonary arterial. And then as we go down farther, you'll see the main pulmonary arteries giving off branches to the lower lobes like that. See, I'll go back up pulmonary arteries. Look and see how you can see the branches coming off into the lower lobes. And that's distinguished from the vessels coming into the left atrium. Here's the left atrium here. And you see now the vessels converging there on the left atrium. And then similarly, as you go down lower, you see them going out to lower portions of the lungs. So it's it's a little bit it's a little bit of a an approach to surveying the pulmonary arteries and the veins for that matter, but mainly we we're worried about pulmonary arteries. And here if we go from the bottom up, you can see here are small vessels of some sort, and as you go up, you will first see those vessels converging. You see we have a number of vessels. They're getting bigger, of course, as we go up closer to the hyla. And the first thing you'll see converging in the mediastinum are the pulmonary veins coming into the left atrium. And then as we go up higher, you'll see pulmonary veins emanating upward toward the upper lobes. And then after that, you'll see these vessels See these vessels, distinct from the vein, venous, venous structures here, these vessels here, which will be converging on the pulmonary artery on each side. So it's just uh, an approach so that when you go through these with experience, you realize that your mind can kind of focus on the pulmonary arteries, even though at first, and for a while, you see just these vessels down here coming out of the hyla and the upper lobes. But in this manner, <clears throat> kind of gives you an idea that you can kind of survey things like this, have an idea of where the pulmonary arteries are, and pay attention to those much more so than you do to the pulmonary veins, and get in the habit of kind of putting them out of your mind, the pulmonary veins for the most part, because we rarely, if ever, detect pathology exclusively in the pulmonary veins. So then, the other question is what might be going on here? No pulmonary embolism. We have these areas in the lungs bilaterally. What could that be? That could be anything, and you might look at that and think, oh, I should know what this is. Absolutely not. It's very nonspecific is the term we use, and no one, no one in this world, no radiologist or anyone else can look at this and tell you what the diagnosis is without a history. So if I told you the patient had 
fever and a cough? It's pneumonia. If I told you they just had a car accident, it can be trauma, pulmonary contusions. So a great deal depends on the history. Could this be aspiration? Yes. Can an acute onset of pulmonary edema look like this? Rarely, but it's conceivable if someone had an acute myocardial infarction and therefore had a large part of the left ventricle infarcted and was unable to eject blood from the left ventricle into the aorta as well as they should. Therefore, you get a back pressure from the left ventricle. Pressure builds up in the left ventricle, and you get back pressure into the left atrium, and which in turn goes to the pulmonary veins and creates pulmonary venous congestion. And in an acute presentation, could conceivably give you extensive bilateral pulmonary opacities, usually not as confluent as this, more initially interstitial, but still it's in the differential here. Oh yeah. That's Max. Yeah. He loves it. He loves people. So here we have the coronal view, and you get the same kind of information, but it comes together a little more quickly because here you can see the pulmonary arteries on each side, giving rise to the respective branches on the left and the right, and here you see the left atrium, remember that was one of the questions on the test, it seemed to be a difficult for some of you, and it is difficult. It, this is a difficult area of navigation, which is why I'm emphasizing it, because you should get the lungs and the lobes pretty much 100%, uh, but this is what will distinguish your level of anatomy knowledge. So here you have the left atrium. Hey, it kind of looks like a, a duck, doesn't it? See that? It's the body, neck, Little beak. And why is that? Let's see, you have a tail made of pulmonary veins and you have the beak made of pulmonary veins converging on the left atrium. So how bad is the lung disease? <clears throat> Worse than you thought. And this just shows how much the lung windowing brings to light the abnormalities in the lungs that could be much less conspicuous on soft tissue windows. And I also point out that when you're looking at a chest CT, that you make sure you review the bones. You don't want to miss a thoracic spine fracture or other fracture, even if it's not the patient's presenting complaint. You want to look at the aorta and the great vessels. What vessel is that? There's the second branch. What vessel is that? What vessel is that? That should be very clear to you now. And always, always keep in mind you should be reviewing, looking for line placement. Is the ET tube going into a main stem bronchus? Is the NG tube going down into the airway? That kind of thing. Okay, that's it for now.